Jesus, that fucking stinks. As you probably already know, the invention of smokeless powder in the 1880s marked the beginning of a new era for portable weapons. The absence of the heavy fouling typical of black powder allowed much more complicated weapon designs to work reliably and gave rise to automatic weaponry like we know it. It is probably the most important invention in the field of ballistics. Now, more than a century later, we have got plenty of weapon systems that were developed using smokeless powder. So I wonder, now that we have devised very reliable guns with modern engineering and materials, would some of those semi-autos also work reliably with the old black powder that served mankind for more than five centuries? To find the answer, we first need to ask ourselves another question first. Which is the semi-auto design that would work better with black powder? The main problem with this propellant is the huge amount of fouling it produces, which means that gas-operated weapons will never work. Excluding those, all the others will work to some extent, some better than others, but there's one that I think is just perfect for this application and is the one we are going to use. Here it is, an old long recoil operated shotgun. This particular one is a 12 gauge made by Franchi of Italy, but the specific maker is not important as long as certain features are present. First of all, it has a smooth bore barrel. The heavy fouling of black powder quickly fills up the lands in rifled weapons, reducing accuracy and forcing the shooter to clean the barrel quite often. While using a smooth bore, the slug you shoot is already aerodynamically stable, so no rifling is needed and therefore barrel fouling is no longer a serious problem. Also, it is long recoil operated. We need a cycling operation that is not affected by heavy fouling. In this regard, long recoil operation is just perfect. It is the system that keeps the breech shut for the longest amount of time, providing the time necessary for the combustion products to be completely vented out of the muzzle. This way we will have very little fouling coming into the action and the mess will be limited to the barrel of the weapon. Also the shotgun, like many of this type, has the barrel bore, bolt and all the other main parts hard chrome plated, which means that they will be immune to black powder induced corrosion, something that will be very handy. Finally, on long recoil shotguns, the cycling operation can be easily adjusted for different levels of cartridge performance, something useful when you don't know how powerful your loads are going to be. In particular, the ease of cycling can be adjusted by acting on these concentric rings, which basically constitute a friction brake. In this configuration, the friction will be only due to the elasticity of the outer ring that squeezes the inner ring against the tubular magazine. If however I flip the ring it sits on top, the copper brake pad will also be squeezed by this conical surface, increasing friction and hence allowing more powerful loads to be used without damaging the end stops of the action. If on the other hand my cartridges are less than average in power, I can completely remove the brake, allowing the action to cycle even with very low recoiling ammunition. Now for the fun part, I loaded some rifle slugs with black powder. I'm using some commercial slugs and loaded them with as much black powder as I could fit in the shell without having the slug nose to stick out. The maximum black powder load suggested for 12 gauge is quite higher, but I would have needed to use a different wood. This is the first test I ever did, with a lower dose of powder and the brake in the normal position, and they weren't able to cycle the next round. Nevertheless, I still managed to get some nice footage with my friend Guy shooting. After that, I increased the dose to what I had originally planned and this time got Maurice to shoot, since you guys seemed to like him. I first wanted to chrono the shots and we got an average of about 350 meters per second. As expected, with the break in position, the shotgun wasn't able to cycle the next round. So I removed it and tried again. As you can see, it is now working fine, with the only drawback of throwing a shower of sparks out of the spent case, but Maurice is used to it. This is the target that he got. The shotgun we're using doesn't have a proper rear sight, so the accuracy is probably limited by the aiming. And this is what it looks like when you are shooting it. Oh! As you can see, rapid fire is not a problem. As long as you are wearing something to protect you from sparks. 
They are not that big of a deal, but you definitely don't want to get them in your eyes. I was wearing those laughable sunglasses to show you the amount of sparks that I collected. Finally, I wanted to do some accuracy testing myself and got similar results as Maurice. I was aiming at the bottom of the target to get better consistency, so that's the reason why the shots went low. I am sure that with some proper rear sights, these loads would have performed better. I might try that in the future. Anyway, once I got back to the shop, I had to clean the shotgun and was quite satisfied with the condition it was in. Even though it had shot about 50 rounds overall, all loaded with black powder, the mess was pretty much contained between the bolt head and the barrel, which are both chrome plated and were easily cleaned. The only issue is that black powder residues seem to stain the anodizing on the aluminum frame. The last thing that I want to do today is to thank you, the viewer, for giving me the opportunity, after almost 7 years of my reports only being read by lawyers and prosecutors, of sharing my experience with somebody who's really interested. I would really love to interact with you in the comments and to have you among my beloved subscribers. I will see you next time, bye!